Hi, my name is Barb Sackle. Today's video is made possible by QuiltWoman.com. In this video today, I will be showing you the churn dash block. This is the second block in my beginning quilting quilt series, as you can see behind me. So you have your instructions in front of you. You've cut out all your pieces and you've started to lay out your block. Now you've cut out your two and a half inch green strip and your two and a half inch purple strip and you've joined them. Out of this strip, you've cut four units, four and a half inch square. Place them down. You've cut your squares from background and your squares from the red. You've cut them once on the diagonal. And again, we take this now and we lay out our block. No matter what I do, I always lay out my block, sew as much as I can, lay out my block, sew as much as I can, and so on. So I always have my instructions next to me, my block is laid out, and now I'm ready to sew. What I'm going to do first is sew these half square triangles together. Now when I place these right sides together, you notice I have this point here. Well, the points don't always go into your machine easily. Sometimes they get muddled a little bit and pushed together. So I'm going to do a little trick and I'm going to use a scrap piece of fabric. I'm going to sew on this first and then I'm going to chain piece off the scrap piece of fabric so that my points don't get caught down into the uh, plate. So let's go. Remember your quarter inch uh, should be a little bit on the scant side. If it's not, check your the video I have, the perfect quarter inch seam allowance. So now we're going to insert the points and we're going to sew our scant quarter inch. There we go. Now I'm going to continue to sew the next three pieces. And like I said before, I'm going to chain piece one right after another without cutting them apart. Now we have our chain in place. Let's take our scissors, cut them apart, and go to the ironing board. Okay, so now we're at the ironing board. We have our four pieces ready to be ironed. Now in this particular t uh, moment, we are going to iron to the dark. So we're going to lay our dark on top, we're going to open it up, and we're going to insert our iron and just kind of softly press that over. Remember when you iron, you don't push because that will stretch your material. So you we just mostly just press and just a comfortable, just comfortable press. So let's do all that to continue on to all the rest of them. Notice how I'm leaving the red on top, inserting the nose of my machine into it, and just gently pressing, not pushing it. Now let's go to the cutting board and square up. Okay, now we're at the cutting board, and the reason that we're at the cutting board is this is the time that you would square up your blocks. I'm going to go into Let's Square Up very basic here. My Let's Square Up video is going to take you very much in depth and then you'll learn exactly how to square up your blocks which will make a more precision quilt. But here basically what I want to do is just measure my blocks and see if I'm on target. The finished product should be four and a half inches. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm just going to lay it on there and see, it, and it is, it's four and a half inches because I did use the scant quarter inch. At this point, if you want to, you can just take off your dog ears, but you don't need to. Um, sometimes they will shadow through, so you might see them. In general, I like to take off my dog ears. I don't like the extra fabric under there. So I'm just going to use my ruler and lay it on top, and it tells me that I am at four and a half inches, and I'm just going to nip off my ears here. I'm going to continue to do this to the rest of my blocks, and then I'm going to set my block back up on the table. See you there. Okay, here we are. We have squared everything up, we have ironed everything, and we've come back to our station and set up our block. Oh, I seem to have something misplaced here. The purple is on the outside. Let's make sure everything is 
where it should be exactly how it's shown on the pattern. Now what we're going to do, this is true for a block and this is true for quilting. I always put together rows. So I'm going to join all these blocks in each row. Once I get the rows done, then I will join the rows. But that is exactly the same how you put together a quilt later on. So remember what I said, you're going to pick up and sew as much as you can, put your pieces back into your block and again so so you're going to see uh, the order that I go here I'm going to join this row but if I joined these two pieces I would have to cut this out of my machine come back and join this piece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain piece I'm going to chain this one this one and this one and then I'm going to cut them apart lay them back in position and then I'm going to add the third piece to each one so let's do it Notice how I'm putting the pieces on top of each other and aligning them up before I take them to the machine. Let's cut them apart. Put them back where they need to go. You don't have to memorize this. This is kind of like a puzzle and, and you'll get used to putting your pieces back. Now I'm going to add the third piece on to each one. Notice how I just turn it over, lay it on top, and then let's sew. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't stop to press these first seams. When I get to this point, remember how we talked about you press to the dark? I do this uh, pressing a little bit different. When I put together rows, I do them so that the seam allowances are opposite. Remember we made that kiss uh, with the last uh, block for our seam allowances. So now, in order to make a nice kiss, I need one row seam allowances going one way, and I need the next row seam allowances going the other way, and I need the next row going the other way. So I don't do any sewing uh, for the whole row, or excuse me, ironing for the whole row until the complete row is done. Let's go to the iron and iron them up. Okay, here we are at the ironing board. Notice how I've laid out my block again. Now I'm going to turn my block over. Like I said, I'm going to do one row one way, the next row the other way, and the next row the other way. Uh, I just do this in, in general across the board. I mean, you always could go inside, outside, but to me that's a little bit too much to choreograph. So I just keep it simple. So I'm going to take this, and notice how I'm giving a little bit of pull here so that I can just stretch it out a little bit. Maybe a little steam would be good. This way, I want to go this way. So I'm going to turn that around so that I can iron normal. But when I put it back in its place, you can see this goes this way, this goes this way, and of course this one is going to go this way, so I can just do straight on iron with this. Now once I press the back, now I can turn it over and make my final press. And make sure that everything is pressed out nice. So again, I'm going to give just a little bit of pull on this end so that the fabric is completely pulled out and stretched out. See, I don't have a little extra lip in there of fabric. Okay, everything is ironed and flat. 
Let's go sew. Okay, so we're sitting back in the machine. We have our block laid out yet once again. And there's one thing that I haven't talked about yet, and that is threads hanging from your block. Um, you'll notice I don't have any threads because the Juki machine that I use, I cut with a foot pedal so it doesn't give me any threads. But normally, if you are on other machines, you would take your block and you would cut it off up here on the cutter. At this point, uh, I would clean up all those hanging threads. I, again, I, I like my back to be as nice as my front, and I, I just uh, it goes along with cutting off the dog ears. I would cut off all the extra threads and just keep it tidy so that you don't have anything showing up under your lighter color fabrics. Okay, it's time to put our block together. Now it's, we're going to lay this on top of our bottom piece. And remember what I said about kissing? You can see that really simple here. You have a yellow and a red, and we're going to kiss those two and we're going to place a pin in it after a nice kiss. We're going to come back to our other seam allowance, or seam right here. Again, we have two purples that are going to kiss nicely. Put them together and your second pin. We're ready to take this to the machine. Line up your edges at the top. And let's go. I'm going to take out my pin right before my machine hits it. I generally, as a rule, don't sew over the pins. It can uh, mess up your timing. So just as a general rule, I always take out your pins if you can. Again, going right to the edge, pulling out my pin. Now at this point, we can go back to the ironing board and iron this open but I'm going to just wait and do it all at once. And you can see I have two perfect seams there. So let's do this, pull this on top. We're going to take your yellow and our red, kiss them nicely, and pin. And the same over here. We have our two purples again. Kiss them, and pin, and let's sew. Notice how I don't pin either end. I can adjust those. I don't I don't need to pin. Them. And there we have it. So we're going to take this to the ironing board and iron it and this completes our block. Thank you for joining me today. And if you have enjoyed what you have seen today, won't you share this video with your friends? And also, if you like the quilts shown on the back wall here, the beginning quilt pattern, which you probably already have if you're following along with me, but I've also made a companion quilt with the churn, um, churn dash block as a table runner, just for practice. So thank you. Remember, all our patterns are available for purchase at quiltwoman.com.